Hi everyone, welcome back to the Getabry channel. So today we're going to talk about thiols, probably one of the sexiest terms in the brewing industry right now, or one of the most um, chatted about. Until very recently we probably had never heard of it or paid much attention to it, so if I wind back to uh, when we started looking at uh, biotransformation with yeast and we were starting to learn and experiment at how yeast would act activate certain compounds within hops to give that more fruit forward finish and the sort of punch out flavors and aroma that you wouldn't have got without that um, interaction. So thiols are a sulfur compound and they're an organic compound and what we are trying to do as brewers is use enzymatic activity or biotransformation to unlock those um, aromas. So thiol aromas are exceptionally difficult to detect. They're measured in parts per trillion. The equipment to analyze them is super expensive. So they're not the type of thing that's readily available to us just yet. But we do know that there's ways of unlocking these aromas and they're aromas that are exceptionally you know, well received in terms of flavor profiles like tropical fruits that you want in those modern beers that everyone seems to desire um, and are on trend at present. So. Where are thiols contained? So thiols are in grape skins of some Sauvignon Blanc wine varieties. Um, they're in hops, usually Southern Hemisphere, like New Zealand type hops. And they're also, they're, they're actually in malt. So it's a really exciting time to be able to experiment and learn more about this. So this is part one of a series of videos that we're gonna be doing on thiols. We've been experimenting with them in our brewery and we've been chatting to our distribution partners to try and learn more about this so we can help you unlock flavors that you wouldn't normally get access to. So the key question that we need to answer is how do we unlock these flavors and aromas? So be warned, they're sulfur compounds, so it's, it's possible to unlock unwanted flavors as well. So we want to learn how to unlock flavors that are desirable and add that flavor and aroma that we're looking for, that sort of tropical passion fruit, guava, Sauvignon Blanc, grape type aroma that we all desire in these um, beers. So how we unlock them is, it's gonna be a challenge and we're learning this. It's basically can be unlocked two ways. The first way is through an enzymatic reaction. So um, beta amylase activity in the mash, say this is allowing us now to look at mash hopping again and just a little point to note, the research that I've read online so far is that there's certain hop varieties obviously work exceptionally better um, than other hop varieties. And so far from what I can read myself is I see that Cascade seems to be doing exceptionally well as a good example of this. So that's one way. The other way is to unlock it during uh, active fermentation. Now a point to note on this is you will see online that there's lots of thiol yeasts available they aren't available in the UK and Europe at this stage because they're genetically modified yeasts and we don't um, have the ability to sell those here just yet because, um, because of the regulations that we're, that we're working under, we're not allowed to put genetically modified products into the food chain. So to this stage, we have an exciting release coming soon um, with an organic version that um, that hasn't been uh, genetically modified that we've been able to isolate this and we're gonna release that in future videos um, in relation to yeast. But unfortunately, we don't have the, the strains of yeast that have been genetically modified available to us that you will see in the States. So what has happened there is they take the IRC7 gene and tweak it so that it unlocks the thiols during uh, fermentation. And it, on, in unlocking those thiols, it allows those delicate aromas to be released so it enhances those tropical fruit, fruit flavors. Where are thiols present? So they're present on some tropical fruits, some uh, grape varieties, some hops, some malts. How we learn to unlock these and get the most out of them is part of this series and we're going to be experimenting with mash hopping, we're going to be experimenting with different types of malt, we're going to be experimenting with different types of yeast to allow us to sort of to take a control sample brewing it the way we normally would and then to use that enzymatic activity and biotransformation to try and unlock those aromas so that we can drive forward something a bit different and unique. And we're gonna share that experience with you um, and you can follow this journey. So you'll read about it online. There is 
lots of people looking into this. There's lots of pioneering research going into it and they're already identifying certain yeast strains that aren't genetically modified or better at this um, amylase activity than others. So to give you a few examples, the um, AY4 from uh, AB is already showing positive indications that it is um, helping unlock these styles as is the juicy New England yeast that we have from AEB as well. So there's certain ingredients that are going to allow you to unlock those flavors a little bit easier than others. Equally, um, there's certain um, certain malts and hops that we're not going to want to use for this. So we're going to draw on the research to explain you know, what to avoid and what to steer you towards in this experiment. What type of beers are people going to want to take this approach with? I suppose is a question that we're going to be asked. and. Currently, that sort of fruit forward um, IPA, New England IPA, where you've got those tropical fruit, fruit flavors coming through are obviously going to be considered for this. Now, there is a lot of development going on in relation to the dried grape skins that are being used. So Phantasm have um, introduced a product that's a dried grape skin that is uh, thiol enriched and has those uh, thiol precursors that help unlock those aroma compounds and get that, you know, that sort of um, Sauvignon Blanc um, grape aroma tropical fruit that you want to get into beer. So uh, it's not to say this can't be used in a lager, but it seems at the moment that most brewers that are experiment, experimenting with it are experimenting it in IPAs and New England IPAs and that sort of style. I do think there's potential for it to be used in lots of different styles of beer and we're going to have a lot of fun experimenting doing that here. So when I chat about enzymatic activity, if you're a very basic home brewer and you're just starting out on your all grain brewing journey, you might wonder what that is. So to try and keep it really simple, um, with all grain brewing, what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to take the malt, crush the malt and carry out an enzymatic activity at that stage. Basically, it's taking the starches that are in the malt and turning them into fermentable sugars. And how you're doing that is you're doing an enzymatic reaction with uh, water at set temperatures to achieve a different outcome. So um, say you're mashing at 68 degrees for 60 minutes, um, you're wanting to make sure that you're getting that conversion, that enzymatic activity where you take the starch and turn it into fermentable sugars. Now, when we move on to um, thiols and releasing those precursors and those aroma compounds, what we're wanting to do is unlock those so that they're not readily available at the moment through that mashing process. So you're wanting that beta amylase activity to unlock those precursors and release those aroma compounds that are carried through the wort and carried through the brewing process. Now, you need something that's rich in those styles, whether that be a hop, whether that be a malt, or whether you've got a, you know, a yeast that's going to unlock those. What we're wanting to do is use the science and use the experimentation here to try and learn how to unlock the good aroma compound so that we can create an enhanced aroma and flavor in our finished beer. Look, we're really interested to hear feedback on this, um, what you've been doing experimenting at home or in your uh, commercial brewery. Have you got some data that you want to share to help us learn ourselves? Look, we're really keen to, to work with you and uh, we're gonna share much more on this series, but this was just an introduction to give you a brief explanation of what files are and we're excited to share what we're gonna be doing in the near future. Okay, until next time, um, remember to hit the like button, give us a little subscribe and hit the bell so you know when we release new content and happy brewing.